So let's begin with the first section of our lecture. And in this uh, section, we will mainly talk about the uh, disease caused by Antamoeba histolytica. And we will discuss in general what is amoebiasis, what are the uh, causative agents of amoebiasis, what's the life cycle and transmission, how it spread and how it uh, uh, grow and develop, reproduce itself. And also we will discuss about the epidemiology of uh, amoebiasis or Antamoeba histolytica disease and what are the regions of the world where it is more common and uh, where it can prevail more commonly. So all that we will discuss in our first section of lecture, amoebiasis. So first the definition, what is amoebiasis? Asis is condition of. So asis is the term used for condition of or amoebiasis is the condition associated with the infection caused by amoeba. So it's an infection with the intestinal protozoan antamoeba histolytic. So antamoeba or amoeba is also a protozoan and it's an intestinal protozoan cause uh, uh, amoebiasis. You can see the picture showing the amoeba infection. About 90% of infections are asymptomatic. They have no symptoms. So 90% asymptomatic, only 10% will have some type of symptoms develop. Remaining 10% produce a spectrum of clinical syndrome and this clinical syndrome is from dysentery to abscess of liver and other organs. So amoebic liver abscess can also occur as a result of amoebiasis and dysentery stool with blood is also common with amoebiasis and it can also cause abscess in some other organs of the body. So very important, 90% of the cases are asymptomatic, so patients uh, don't have any symptoms, although they have infection by intamoeba histolytica. Only 10% will present with dysentery and they can develop liver abscess and an abscess of other organs of the body. Life cycle and transmission of the Antamoeba histolytica. So if you see here, uh, begins with here, cyst and trophozoids passed in feces. So person infected by amoebic infection or infected by Antamoeba histolytica will pass the cyst and trophozoids in the feces. Next, what happens is mature cysts, once they are uh, passed in the feces, any contamination of the food, water, unhygienic conditions cause that cyst to be ingested. And it is ingested and it goes in the intestine and then from there uh, it cause there is N cystation here. You can see the cyst, mature cyst, which are uh, ingested, they develop, they are encysted or they are enclosed down and they cause formation of trophozoids. And this trophozoid then multiply, trophozoid multiply, and then they develop into the cyst and these cysts exit the host and then again ingested by the uh, another person. So the life cycle is from human to human, exit in the feces, ingested, 
grow in the intestine and cyst cystation occurs, trophozoites form, maturation of trophozoites occur, form the cysts again, pass into the feces. So the life cycle is in the human to human, it is ingested, passed in feces and then again ingested. Here if you see this is the uh, infective stage, I infective stage. Diagnostic stage is this bluish discoloration, infective and diagnostic stage. Yellow is uh, A is non-invasive colonization. So it's non-invasive colonization. And then intestinal disease, here you can see this is the intestinal disease and this is the extra intestinal when it can colonize in the lungs and the liver. So it can be the colonization can occur in the intestine and then it can spread to the other organs, it can colonize the liver, cause liver abscess, it can colonize the lungs, cause the problem in the lungs, and um, uh, this is infective and di diagnostic stage is when the mature cysts are ingested, and then when the cysts pass into the feces, both these are the uh, infective and diagnostic phases. So, life cycle and transmission, simple cysts of the Antamoeba histolytica pass in the feces, ingested, pass in the intestine, it can cause the intestinal stage, intestinal disease, from there can spread to the liver, to the lungs, cause liver abscess, cause lung disease, and then after the uh, intestinal disease, it can pass into the feces, and from there, it can be ingested, cysts grow into the encystation stage, from ancestation, trophozoites developed from trophozoid mature cysts form and then these are released again. So that's the life cycle, how it enters the body and how it grows and what are the different organs of the body through which can be affected. Epidemiology of uh, amoebiasis, about 10% of world's population is infected with antamoeba. Majority are infected with the non-invasive antamoeba this far. So antamoeba histolytica is invasive type of disease we already mentioned cause invasion of intestine, cause invasion of uh, uh, liver, lungs, other organs, muco mucous membrane and cause disease. But mostly 10% of the population that is affected by antamoeba, they are affected by the non-invasive type which is antamoeba dyspar. Amoebiasis, third most common cause of death from parasitic disease. So amoebiasis can be severe, can cause hepatic liver, uh, hepatic amoebic abscess and other, and can cause dysentery, and it's the third leading cause of death from parasitic infections. So it's the uh, fatal disease. Invasive colitis because in when the invasion of the colon occur as a result of amoebic infection and liver abscess sevenfold more common among men than among women. So more common in men than in women and it can cause invasive colitis and it can cause liver abscess. Antamoeba histolytica it's a unique, have unique isoenzymes, have surface antigens present, have DNA markers, and they have virulence properties. That's why antamoeba histolytica is an invasive 
cause invasive disease can cause dysentery and hepatic abscess because it has some specific characteristics it have some virulence properties that can cause virulent disease and it has a unique isoenzymes surface antigens dna marker and virulence properties Asymptomatic carriers harbor antamoeba, dyspar, and have self-limited infections. So most of the cases we saw, they were asymptomatic. About 90% of the cases, usually those asymptomatic carriers have antamoeba, dyspar infection because they are non-invasive and they cannot cause serious infections. Antamoeba dyspar dissimilar to other enteric pathogens like cryptosporidium and cystoisospora uh, bali incapable of causing invasive disease. They cannot cause invasive disease, asymptomatic, less severe, less pathogenic, less virulent, and they are different from other uh, enteric pathogens like cryptosporidium and cystoisospora bali. Antamoeba histolytica cause invasive disease, invasive amoebiasis, amoebic liver abscess. So it's more serious, more damaging, cause invasive disease, usually is symptomatic, fatal because of uh, its uh, invasiveness and it can cause uh, liver abscess and dysentery and invasive amoebiasis. Antamoeba Moshkovsky cause diarrhea, weight loss and colitis. So all these are different three types of antamoeba. They can cause different uh, manifestations. So weight loss, diarrhea and colitis. Areas of highest incidence of antamoeba infection are in the uh, tropical regions of Mexico, India, nations of Central and South America, tropical Asia and Africa and Bangladesh. So these are some regions of the countries in tropic that are most commonly affected by antamoeba infection or amoebiasis. So that concludes our section one. Thank you for watching scardia.com.